And welcome back everyone to another eClinicalWorks teaching module. Today we'll be covering the surgical history and hospitalizations, the family history, the social history, and we'll finish off with implants. So as always, we start at the top of our progress note of a test patient. And we're going to move down right past the GYN and OB history. And we'll start with the surgical history. So as you can see, all of these sections have something in it, so we're going to have a little bit of unpacking to do, but let's get started. When you enter this screen, you'll notice the surgical history and the hospitalizations are on the same uh, page. Here's the little cartoon to help you along. So surgical history is here with the little scissors and the scalpel. And this is a fairly extensive history for many patients. Uh, most of the time you won't see quite so many entries. And like in the previous sections of the past medical history, you have the option of typing in a keyword or using a CPT code. Or you can always scroll down and simply free type enter. So just to show you how everything works, you can simply delete by clicking on the receptacle and you can add again. So let's come up with something here. We're gonna put a cabbage. And that'll be in 2020. And then all you have to do is press enter. And now you've got a number next to it. And then you can continue on downward. Alternatively, we can add other things here. Like these various things. So that's how you can search for CPT, not ICD code. So just keep that in mind that you don't have ICD codes like in the past medical history here. And as always, if there's no surgical history, you can click on the denies past surgical history button up here. But in this case, you can't because this surgical history was already verified. Always press the verify button. Remember that. Now, moving down to hospitalizations, first, I'd like to draw your attention to the top one here. As above, most of the time, you won't see a patient with this many entries, as I'd mentioned before. Usually, you'll have someone with none or maybe one or two. So if all someone ever had was an appendectomy for their surgery, and that's the only time they went to the hospital, it's pretty reasonable to just write as above. And this is perfectly fair, so you can do this if you like. And then there are other entries here. So just like before, everything else, you simply delete the receptacle, and you can add something else underneath. So let's do that. And notice that here, the date is just 2016. If that's all you can get out of your patient, then that's fine. But if you can get the month, that would be even better. So let's do that date. And notice if I press enter here, it's not gonna work. But if I press enter while I'm over the reason, now I've got a number and I'm going to the next one down. And as always, make sure it's verified or denied, whatever the case might be. Moving along to family history, this is a bit of a busier screen. So under relatives, you see there's a lot of different relatives. For most patients, you won't cover quite this many of their relatives. You'll usually just ask for the pertinence. In this particular case, there were a lot of pertinence. And you can see that many of the patients' relatives were either not given a status or they were unknown. So let's go ahead and change around just to see what this would look like. Don't be surprised if you don't see year of birth for a lot of them. This isn't a common thing to do, but let's see what happens if I do that. See, it automatically calculates the age for me. So that's what's convenient about that. You don't necessarily have to ask the age. Uh, it's actually easier for you to ask for year of birth. You can add special notes here. And so you have many options. So we're going to give them this. Click OK. And then that's what's under the note. And then here are all the other common conditions that they may or may not have. So you unclick it and it disappears. You click it and it appears again. And as always, you want to verify. And then here is the animation to help guide you along. Notice that it's before surgery. Even though we went to surgery first, clicked forward, and then ended up here. This does not necessarily match up with this mode of uh, moving along. So just keep that in mind. And see, we have many other options. So we're not gonna cover all of these here. Here's some more pertinent siblings and children, since those are the most genetically similar to yourself. If there's nothing to report, then you can just click this healthy here. And it's very easy to change like that. And then of course, there's a free typing area here. 
Now here we have certain specific details. For certain specialties, it'll be easier to simply ask about your particular uh, brand of the family history. And if there's nothing, you can summarize here. For example, So that's for our ophthalmologist. That's just an example of something that's permissible that you can do if it's so necessary. And then notice that there is a non-contributory box that you can check. In this case, uh, we're not quite sure which specialty this would fall under since we covered a few things, but you can click that if it's relevant. And as always, make sure to verify. That is important. Next, we're moving on to social history. Now, social history does have this template feature, so you can choose from various different things. And then there's the S right there, so that's your social history. That's a big giveaway. You can use these templates, but there's not necessarily something specific to what you might be asking. It really depends on what you as the practitioner want to do. So if you want to ask about drugs and alcohol, you can use this template. But just remember that you're not necessarily uh, bound to this. So, for example, Let's select some options here. That's how that would look. Oh, something went wrong. All right. But remember, most of what you want to put can be put down here as well. So if there is not something specific you're looking for, then it's better to just free type. So for example, notice that the different ones I've been clicking through, they're all saved up here. If I don't type anything into any given one of these, then it won't even appear in the progress note. Now notice here there were options, or there could be, but then there's also a free text. So, so just a little summary of what can be done for the social history. And always verify. Next, we're going to go to the implant screen. Now, for the implant screen, as with other certain features, oftentimes you won't have anything here. Now, in this case, we have two things because this is a test patient. And let's go ahead and add something. So, in this case, they're not letting me, but let's see what we can adapt. See, this is how you can delete, and this is how you can edit although the computer's not letting us here. Now, the most important thing on this screen, which again, here is our little shortcut, is to press the verified button. Now, it just says verified here, and that's because this is sort of the verify all button. So this is the last time you'll see a verify button in the progress note. So by clicking it here, you're sort of saying that you've verified all the verifiable areas. And that's important because it sort of tells the people looking over that you did your homework, that you made sure to be thorough, and there won't be any more verify buttons going forward. So just keep that in mind, it's a good practice to sort of round out this particular portion of the progress note. Now granted there's still more to come, but you just won't see this here. So let's exit out for a moment and see our work as we did. So here's our cabbage from earlier. Didn't do anything with the implants. With the hospitalizations we added the pneumonia. Denies ocular family history. Remember, we did that. And for social history, we answered some of these things. Notice the different subheadings. They're in purple as usual. So we use the tobacco use and the drug and alcohol um, subscreenings. But notice what's missing. We don't have that pediatric one like we had before. So just remember that. Oh, and here's our free text. So just remember, whenever you have a subheading like this or a template and you don't use it, you're not going to see it in the progress note. So hopefully this has been informative and this finishes up our subjective portion. And we look forward to seeing you again next time when you will be proficient in your surgical history, your hospitalizations, family history, social history, and implants, and you'll learn something new. So thank you and until then.